So what have we got today? Is it worth taking a low paying job to get photo credentials? Let's focus on that. Tom and Ryan here. So today we're going to bring up a little topic that uh, is a little bit of a sore spot and a source of What's a lot fun? of contention and debate uh, amongst photographers of all levels, not just pros or semi-pros or aspiring, but pretty much all levels. Is it worth taking a job that pays less than you need it to, but will get your name out there with a big publication or get, get you in print somewhere, maybe even get you on a billboard? but you're not gonna get paid as much as you'd expect to or even want to. Coming from my own background, I do that all the time, but that's because I have a day job. I mean, I do a lot of stuff way cheaper than I should because I don't need the, well, the money's nice. I don't have to have the money to pay the bills, which is a detriment. I even see it from myself as a detriment to the industry as a whole. Oh, and then a part of that is, ex is experience-based too. It it's sort of a sub part of that is generally the longer you've been trying to make money as a photographer is the more that you need to be making because yeah. it serves a larger part of your life and a larger part of what you need to keep a business running and advancing in technology and advancing in what you do with staffing and what you do with business expenses. It doesn't always, it's not always a straight curve for like experience to money generally needed. But that's, that's a lot of it. It's very subjective and it has a lot to do with what fields you're looking to work in especially. I, I work with weddings a lot. Uh, I work for a wedding photographer who's been doing it forever. And I'm starting to take my own work. I'm starting to seek my own stuff after a couple of years of shooting as a second shooter, working in the industry for other people. Not everyone does that and it shows. Um, yeah, it really, it does and show. And people do that, and they're still terrible, and then they make way more money than me. I see, I see a trend in the wedding stuff where there are people who are very good at what they do, and they have the right to start charging $4,000 plus. Their lowest package is $4,000. And then there's the people who scrim for the $2,000 roughly customers, and then there's the others. There's everybody underneath $2,000 or so. So that's, my, that's our market. That's New England. That's a tough market to be shooting. We've said this a couple of times. New England is a terrible place to be a photographer in general. Yeah, no, it because is. Because there's so many people. Yeah. All of you. It's so tough to answer the, this kind of a question. Well, I, I always, so my, my stupid rambling thing is that it's always very case to case. And I have to see a lot, a lot of direct rewards that are non-monetary in order to consider them even valid. Like well, I think, I think that's where the whole question points is, do the non-monetary rewards justify the lower monetary value? They have to, for, in my case, they have to be quite substantial. It has to be something that I'd be stupid to pass up, like something that I, I need to do. So like if, uh, say, Time Magazine offered you a job, say, we're gonna, we want you to do this one job, but we're only going to pay you $1,000 for a three-month assignment, yeah, but you get to say you were in Time Magazine. Yes, it's anything that's anything that substantially helps your portfolio or helps your resume in the end. That's me, though. That's I mean, that's something. Well, I guess some... that's why it's a point of contention and a yeah. great, great debate topic. I actually am trying to get out of the mentality of it's okay to take lower-paying jobs because I would like to. Well, I'd like to make more money. Obviously, anyone who's trying to do this for a living. Uh, would like to make more money. But for me, it also comes down to things like I feel like I'm undercutting myself a lot of the time. A big part of this is not about the amount of money that you're actually taking in over a job. It has to do with the caliber of the job you're dealing with. Um, as a wedding photographer, it's not that you can't charge less than, a, say, $1,000. It's that when you do a wedding for less than $1,000, what you're going to be dealing with is much worse than charging two or three thousand dollars for a wedding. Yeah, and uh, do you just you're dealing with people who are usually trying to to scrimp every penny for their wedding, which is not necessarily a terrible thing. But those are usually a lot more stressful jobs. They're people that people are generally tougher to be customer service representatives for. Yeah, 
Uh, it's just that's people say it all the time. It's there's a lot more competition. There's a lot more cutthroat cutthroat maneuvers between between photographers in the two thousand dollar or less range. It's very it's very bad. It's tough to take the move to get yourself out of it. That's that's the thing. To get yourself out of that range takes a while. Yeah. It takes skill. It takes it takes a very specific environment. It takes a very specific market. It also takes a lot that. of confidence. Yeah. All right, you got to be willing to put yourself out there and say, "This is what I'm worth," and be willing to accept the fact that someone might say, "Well, I can't pay that," and that most people will say that. But the ones you do get will all result in better jobs, will all result in probably better pictures in the end than somebody shooting the same job for $2,000. Yeah. And there's a good example in wedding stuff. I was, I, I'm always looking at wedding photographers locally. And the photographer I looked at, her work was very gorgeous. I don't remember her name or website. I would actually tell you and have you go look because it was very good work. She started $39.95 for a five-hour five-hour coverage package with no printed material. No material, no album, no almost anything included. Like $3,900. Okay. I didn't know which end you were working off of it to start with when no. it was the $40. I was like, what? No, but her work warranted it. It's, she had yeah. great reviews. She had 60-something reviews on Wedding Wire. You can tell she works a lot. She had hundreds of pictures on her website, which are all gorgeous, which scares me because they're not usually all that good. But she deserved it. It's one of those, that, much like there was a company across the street from us who was also charging $4,000 to start for their packages. They did a lot of work in Newport, and they deserved every penny of that. Especially in our area, photographers don't understand how much wedding crap costs, I yeah. think. No, they don't. Because they're, I, I see weddings where I know like it's maybe $2,000 for our services. And there's a guy in the corner who also just made $1,000 for four hours to sit there rolling cigars for the guests. There's something wrong with how much money that was exchanged between you and the person who's responsible for your memories of that day. <laughs> yeah, I've been to some weddings where I know we were a small percentage of the money spent that day at $6,000 for two of us or whatever it was. Yep. You know, officers club in Newport, you got the whole day, you have food, food, and then more food, and then some food later on that day, and then the guy rolling cigars and all this stuff, which was just a ton of money. Unbelievable. So let me throw in one more scenario at you to, to get you thinking about this. If it comes down to, I got to pay the rent, do you take the $400 full day job? You take whatever jobs you need to take. It's working is better than not working. But the moment that that's not true, you need to stop doing it. The moment that you have any sort of ability to just start saying no to jobs that you don't need to do, you, you stop. I, that line differs for everybody, but I know for me, if I mean $400 in a day, I would do all day. That's a full, it depends on the, the stuff. For me, it's very specific to what I'm gonna be doing and what requirements I need, what sort of stress I'm going to go through that day, what sort of processing I have to do. My pricing varies. I could very well do a couple hour serious day for $400, but it's not going to be a wedding. You know, a whole wedding is an expensive undertaking. Yeah, I can't, I, I honestly can't argue with anyone who's taken the, taken the check just to be able to pay the rent or just be able to put food on the table. But yeah. Undercutting yourself constantly just because you feel like you need to do it, uh, well, that's what you need to do. It feel like you need to do it. to cut your, undercut yourself just to get your name out there. I see a lot of people who habitually they'll price themselves low, and they'll usually be their partner will usually work somewhere else, so they don't need a lot of income. So they never think that they have to up their prices after a while. So they end up for a couple of years shooting at the same four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollar price, taking a ton of work at that price never really advancing their, their gear, their skill level, their time to train and learn, all that kind of stuff, and just kind of sit there churning out mediocre stuff at $600 for years and years because it's, that's how much they need. That's what they need to satisfy. All right, but that, that's, you know, that's fine for them if that's what they need, you know, if that's where their satisf satisfaction is. But 
they're not the ones saying, okay, I'm going to take the $400 job to get, your name out there. get my name out there. They're just happy where they are. At a certain point, it's, it stops making you a photographer in a weird way. If you're no longer seeking to improve a craft, I feel like you're, you're now a photo services person. Yep. It's like you're not embodying your career, you're just sort of sticking your path and staying there, which is not, to me, what that word means. To me, the, this whole question uh, has a, a very recent and very uh, personal touch to it because uh, last weekend I was up at the Scientific Music Festival, which I went in on basically a press pass, VIP pass combination thing. Um, they let me go in and treated me like one of the VIPs. They gave me food, they gave me beer, and they let me go wherever I want on, on an all-access pass to take pictures. And in exchange, I gave them all the pictures and copies of all. Obviously, I still have the original. Well, I did not get paid for that, but I got my name out there. I actually was up there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday night I was out shooting a concert for one of the bands. For me, the networking was, was worth it. So I kind of, I hate myself for saying that because I know I, know I wasn't ever going to get paid for that gig. Because yeah. there were another, other bunches of volunteer photographers. And I was going to go anyway, so I guess it really wasn't that bad. But, because it, it is a fun festival. The, mon non, the monetary value in the long run is now I have a new client. And even though I only got one out of three nights of shooting there, I still have a new client. And yeah. the great thing about the music community is these people aren't in just one band. Like, I, actually, of the five members of this band, they comprise four other bands that they also <laughs> are in. The possibility to, to network from there goes up for me, and that's the non-monetary and, and long-term monetary boost that I'm going to get out of that, that I was okay with shooting for free for three days. Also, it was a lot of fun, and I rented a uh, fisheye lens from Morrow Lenses, which worked out really well. So that's another story. I might talk about that uh, yeah. tomorrow. So Yeah, it's one of those things that's nice to hear people's take on stuff because we're so engaged into what we're doing anyway. It's hard to see how other people view things, really. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we've always said on this show, uh, when, even in, you know, whether it's the long format or the short format or pretty much anything we've been doing is... It's all about the conversation. It, the, little, the tagline I, I use in the long format, and I gotta bring back to this, is the conversation gets better when we all get involved. So I'm actually curious what our audience thinks, because this is a huge conversation to have. They'll blow up our comments on this post, because I wanna know what you guys think, and I will even bring those comments back in when we come back, you know, maybe we'll come back and review this. Maybe yeah, this is an easy one to talk about. This is an easy one to come it, back to, especially when we get a lot of comments, we get a lot of feedback. Yeah, and it varies so and much it, by like, time as a photographer, too. It's one of those. Yeah. Or if you have questions for us as to what we would or wouldn't do, feel free to ask. No, Although I can't guarantee we'll answer all your questions, because if you ask me, like, you know, would I be willing to shoot a Playboy shoot for nothing? Obviously. Uh, well... We'll come back to this uh, in the new format. We're looking at every Wednesday, bringing up different topics to talk about. So if you have a specific topic you'd like us to talk about or if you have questions you'd like us to answer, this is really the big part of the conversation goes two ways. Is going to be these Wednesdays and maybe even special things that we do every once in a while. Uh, but definitely these Wednesdays are going to be our big part of our two-way conversation. So make sure you're asking questions, posting comments. Post comments and questions on any video because just because Wednesday's our two-way day, doesn't mean that you couldn't ask us something about the D810 that we talked about yesterday. Uh, you could ask us questions about that. We'll, we'll try and answer them to the best of our ability. Maybe we'll be able to get one in our hands at some point when they get one at Hunt's. I'd also like to talk to them about possibly sponsoring our show. Yeah. Probably uh, feels a lot like the 800, but continue. I haven't picked up an 800 yet, so oh. to me it would, it would be a whole new feeling. Yeah. And, you know, basically just keep the conversation rolling. You know, we're on Twitter. Uh, you can hashtag Bucket Castle. You can... Yeah, I've been putting that on the video. I don't know if you've seen that. No, yeah, it's cool. Um, so there's the hashtag Bucket Castle. The, I'm using the at, at A2P photo for the Twitter account uh, so I don't have to manage five different Twitter accounts. Or you can get us on Facebook or on... No, I guess that's it. I think we're on yeah, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and, and YouTube. The internets. Not the all internets. of the internets. because Enough of the internets. Neither of us have an Instagram. I have one somewhere. Oh, you do? Everyone should. You should uh, have one. It's just whether uh, anyone cares about it. I have a Tumblr that I've never posted to. I have Tumblr. 
I like my Tumblr. Your Tumblr is fun. My Tumblr is like three posts that said, hey, I have a podcast. And I decided, yeah, screw this. Yeah. And it opened up AperturChat.com. So make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're getting your friends to subscribe. I'm going to stop harassing you about the homeless people, but I still want you talking to them. I still want you talking to them. Uh, that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, dude.